Hey, it's Andrew on Software. Today I would like to talk about application layer and domain layer. What is the difference and what are the most important points here? I've had several interesting conversations recently about this topic, so I have some points to cover here. So what's the difference? Let's start with domain, co domain code. In domain code or domain layer, it stays the same regardless of whether you use it from mobile, web or from console. This is the kind of code that it doesn't matter whether you use, use some kind of form-based UI or some task-oriented UI, it's still the same code. It's usually very granular, very detailed. So if you look at a web application, you can. it's tempting to think about the domain in terms of the UI as you see it, but it's very rarely the case uh, because with web UI, it's usually, very often, it's very form oriented so you have a batch of data being changed together while in on the domain layer it's very often a case that one field is actually changing one field in this form is one operation one command as i would as i would call it uh, so changing several fields together it's actually several domain commands uh, web is form oriented mobile apps when they use your domain via the API, for example, they sometimes tend to be more task-oriented, which is usually considered better from a domain perspective because there is more like this mapping, it's not exactly one-to-one, -one, but it's closer to this uh, when you use uh, a task-oriented UI. And task-oriented UI means that there is a clear meaning after every change of the, of the UI, of the data. So... Usually you don't just change like the fo the whole form as with web in app layer um, in the mobile applications. It's more often that you just ch change one one thing. Uh, application layer um, seems to be responsible usually f for this mapping. So it takes those params. For example, in Rails, you get this params object, um, which is a typical like web oriented thinking here, and then the app layer should turn it into something that is understandable by the domain. It could be a value object, uh, so it's a special data structure that you create uh, as part of your domain. It can be a command, something that is rec recognized by the domain, it's actually part of the domain. It can be just like a simple data structure object. So params itself is actually a, date, a simple data structure here. And many Rails programmers prefer to just pass the params uh, as they come to the controller uh, to, the, to the domain layer. And that this can work, but very often this is missing a chance to make this translation that you are not actually, if you receive params consisting of six fields, six values, it might be the case that it's actually six different operations to the domain. And like the typical Rails approach or any kind of CRUD framework approach, it doesn't help here. It's usually oriented towards accepting those params as a batch and then go further. So this is for me the biggest difference here. Application layer is very close to the UI, but the domain layer shouldn't be, should be like UI unaware, basically. Uh, so application layer is usually like, in, the, in, in case of, of uh, web, it's, it's the HTTP part, so controller is application layer too, mm, but it's, it's also like persistence or some kind of API calls. This is like brought to you from the application layer. And many people forget about pers persistence. So persistence is something that uh, some people put the, the persistence interface as part of the domain, but the implementation is actually coming from the application layer. So Rails with active records, with active records brings the persistence layer. But it's okay, it's, it's still part of the application layer, so that's good. And domain layer can work without persistence. This is important. Or domain layer can work with some kind of in-memory repository, for example, or in-memory storage. So instead of using the real active record, you can actually run the domain uh, domain layer using some kind of in-memory implementation of the persistence, because the domain layer doesn't care about persistence. And one big realization of mine was recently that all the reads, whenever you display data on the user interface, it's user interface, it's application layer. So all the reads, all the queries, it's actually part of the application layer too. In the past, years ago, I've, I tend to put reads as part of my domain layer. So I couldn't like avoid the problem of having my domain objects 
exposing public gutters, which was something I always felt was wrong. But then I realized, I learned about CQRS, Command Query Responsibility Segregation, and I learned that read models, the, all the reads, are part of the applica application layer. And it's much, much better to me think, to think this way. The domain, now, the domain code is, as mu is now much simpler. Whenever the UI changes, I need to change the read model, and that makes sense. It's, it simplifies the structure of my code. Domain code is, in a way, reusable. Application layer, so domain could be actually reusable in the meaning that it can be called from mobile web and so on. But application layer is specific. If you have another client um, calling your domain, you shouldn't reuse the application layer. You need to build your another separate one so that there is no coupling between them. And domain can be actually a library. Um, I, I'm a Ruby programmer, but I try to look like what, what are the patterns used in Java or .NET communities. And it's quite actually popular that uh, domain is a library in those communities, while in Ruby, for example, I, 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 I think I'm yet to see a situation where domain is a gem and you just include the gem in your race application, you just require it. That's very rare, but that's something that definitely is a good idea. So those are my points about application layer and domain layer, and thanks for listening.